You've joined us on Starting Up. Now, $9 billion, well, that isn't exactly the kind of money you read about every day, but it is the exact amount Dr. Ramesh Vadwani's Aspect Develop fetched him a decade ago. Believe it or not, that transaction till date is the largest the software industry has seen. So the ECL caught up with the man for this Starting Up exclusive. Entrepreneur, philanthropist and private equity head honcho, Dr. Ramesh Vadwani is the founder of the Symphony Technology Group, which has 10 companies in its portfolio with total revenues that exceed $2 billion. Before Symphony, Ramesh was a serial entrepreneur. The most successful of his ventures is Aspect Development, which he sold to i2 Technologies for a whopping $9.3 billion. A transaction which till date remains the largest in software history. We started the interview by asking him about his first ever entrepreneurial venture, the IIT Bombay Canteen. I think that was a really interesting experience because it wasn't just the fact that it was my entrepreneurial experience, it was in the midst of socialist India. Because this happened uh, around 1965-66. And at IIT Bombay, there were no snacks available, no Cokes available, and we'd come back from a long day's work, come back to Hostel 2, and uh, we'd have to wait for hours before dinner would be served. In the meantime, all of us were, you know, dying of hunger and <laughs> thirst. So it appeared that there was an opportunity here to just do something as simple as setting up a canteen. We needed capital, and I pulled together nine other friends, and each of us put in 10 rupees. So the initial startup capital for the Canteen Corporation of Hostel 2 was 100 rupees. And we hired one person to go to Vikroli and pick up all these supplies. Turned out to be an extraordinary success. And after one year, we returned a 10,000% dividend to the <laughs> shareholders. So Take us through aspects. So aspects is a fantastic story. You started a company in 1991. Right. And 10 years later, it turned out to be the biggest software acquisition uh, in, the, in, in the industry's history right. at $9 billion, right? So what did Aspect do? And uh, take us through that uh, momentous acquisition. So once I had sold my second company, uh, and it was time for me to do the third one, and by the way, I don't hop around companies very easily. Each startup uh, that I've built has been a 10-year journey. So CompuGuard was a 10-year journey. American Robot was a 10-year journey. Aspect, as it turned out, was also a 10-year journey. But when I started it in 1991, uh, I came up with the concept of uh, combining uh, content analytics and enterprise software into one solution. And the solution area that I focused on was the whole area of design and procurement in the electronics design and manufacturing process. It's kind of interesting. We went public at $20 a share. On opening day, it climbed from 20 to $32 a share, and of course, everyone at Aspect was very enthusiastic and uh, felt very good. <coughs> Over the next couple of years, it went from 32 to $60 a share, and then we missed a quarter. Okay. So as a public company, the worst possible thing you can do is yeah. have a high-flying stock and then miss a quarter. Right. And because our valuation was so high, the market overreacted, Understood. and our stock came down from $60 to $30 to $15 to $6. Now, this was a time when there were internet startups all over the place, 99, right? I mean, this was right. the height of internet fever. Each one of our employees was getting, you know, five calls a week for other job opportunities in Silicon Valley. So I actually showed up for work the next morning, the, uh, after the morning on which we missed the quarter, in torn jeans and a torn t-shirt and gave a talk to all our employees and laid out the plan for the uh, reinvention of the company. To the credit of the entire team that we had, every single person stayed. We looked back the other side of our stock story. The six became 30, the 30 became 60. I thought it was going to pause. It kept going to 90, then it went to 100, then it went to 120, then to 150, then 200. And then finally, when it's sitting at 200, our market value was about seven billion, uh, just as a public company. And we got a call from i2 Technologies. Uh, the CEO happened to be an Indian, but I didn't know him at all. And he said he'd been following us for three years. He had been desperate to buy our company. 
He wished he'd made an offer a year earlier when our stock was down quite low, and uh, but he felt, you know, it was time to do it. So he added another $2 billion to our valuation and made us an offer at $9 billion. And it's kind of very hard to refuse a $9 billion offer when you're only a $200 million company. So we met in Dallas, which is where he was based. And in six hours, we negotiated a deal. So I got all this I2 stock. The day we did the deal was, lit was March 10, 2000. It was literally the day that NASDAQ was at its all-time high. You know, it was at 5,000 or something like that. All stock deal. And the next day, the stock the whole NASDAQ starts declining. Here I am, the largest uh, shareholder after Sanjeev, the CEO of I2, and stock's declining. I'm a board member, and I can't sell any shares. I didn't make the Forbes 400 the following several years because the value of the stock went down, and therefore my net worth went down. And then when I was building Symphony Technology Group, you know, I had pretty much concluded that I didn't want to be a one-shot wonder anymore. <laughs> We were going to build a group of truly great companies, and I think we have 10 such companies now in Symphony Technology. Pretty much concluded that I didn't want to be a one-shot wonder anymore. <laughs> we were going to build a group of truly great companies, and I think we have 10 such companies now in Symphony Technology Group. So yeah. that's one side of uh, Dr. Ramesh Wadwani, right? Uh, and the other side is, of course, the, f the philanthropic side, right? right? So you've You've pledged almost 80% of your wealth uh, to philanthropy, and you plan to do that over the course of the next two decades. Right. Right. So take us through how the philanthropic side really started. The mission of the Wadwani Foundation was and is to accelerate economic development in the emerging economies with India at the core right. of, of the group of countries that we might call emerging economies. Sure. So then the idea was to pick our initiatives, and I came up with the idea of the National Entrepreneurship Network about uh, seven and a half, eight years ago. I met Laura at uh, the Ashoka International uh, Foundation in Washington, D.C. Over a period of a year, tried to convince her to join. She joined. She came to work in Palo Alto. After a few months, we both concluded that the action was all really in India, and uh, we evolved the thinking behind the National Entrepreneurship Network. And she moved to India and has, of course, uh, built a very, very uh, important program. So I think that first phase of the program uh, is done. I think it's been pretty successful. The, the college programs are in place. All the other resources are in place. And many companies have already gotten formed. This next phase of NEN over the next five to seven years is really going to be about supporting individual entrepreneurs. And the other one is policy change. Yeah where I think a lot more can be done to make it easier for entrepreneurs to start companies, get funding for companies, get loan guarantees. Is it 50% job done? I would say 30 or 40% of <laughs> okay. the job is done. Okay. The reason I say that okay. is in the end, everything has to be measured by outcomes sure. and not inputs. Right. This is the question. Right. So you, you're split between uh, Ramesh the entrepreneur and Ramesh the philanthropist. Right. Uh, what are Ramesh Wadwani's plans uh, over the next five years? Uh, so, for the next five years, I'd like to do exactly what I've done, which is build companies on one side and give back to the, and, and give back to the 80 percent of that to the community through these philanthropic initiatives on the other side. Dr. Badwadi, it's yes. been an honor having you on the show. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. In fact, Ramesh is also working closely with the Education Ministry to develop a vocational training program that makes Indians far more employable. We wish him all the best.